So we've got one more final video for 4.2. This one will be just about mechanical efficiency and mechanical advantage, um, kind of comparing and contrasting the two and talking about um, all the ins and outs of each one. So mechanical advantage is the, sorry about that, um, the number of times that the machine, the, the simple tool, the machine, uh, multiplies the input force. So, the number of times the machine multiplies the input force. So you calculate that by taking input divided by output force. Um, Essentially, this is telling you, you know, if it's telling you the number of times the machine multiplies the input force, it's going to tell you how much bigger of a force you're going to get out of the tool than you put into it. And remember, a force is basically how easy it is to do the job, to do the work. <clears throat> if the machine is having a greater output force than the input force, it's doing, it's applying the force more than you are and therefore it's making it easier for you. So essentially what we can say is how much easier the tool makes the work. And I mean that literally, the actual work, right, in terms of force times distance. How much easier the tool makes the work. How many times easier. Um, so we're, we're going to get into some, some examples in a second down below. But first I want to get you know, an idea of what mechanical efficiency is. So essentially from the word you know, efficiency, you know that it's basically telling you how efficient of a, of a machine that is. So how efficient the machine is is. And if we remember from before when we were talking about, you know, why we can't have work input ever actually equal work output, the reason that that can't happen is because of friction. So an ideal machine is one where work input equals work output. And that's impossible due to friction. So when we're talking about this efficiency up here, we're talking about any lack of efficiency, you know, if it's 99% efficient, that 1% that we've lost is due to friction, right? This um, mechanism right here, maybe it's old and it's rusty. So you apply a force to it and it takes a little bit of, of that work, of that force, to overcome friction. And that's just lost. That's wasted. And therefore, you, this machine is no longer as efficient as it was when it was new and well-oiled and not rusty. So we calculate mechanical efficiency by taking the... Oh, I've got these backwards. Hey. Not input, not output. That should be the reverse. See? I mess up sometimes. Output, I can't even, yeah, that's spelled right, input, um, which makes more sense because your output force should be greater. So it should be 10 over 1. It multiplies it by a factor of 10. My bad. But see, that's a good way to remember it. Since the force should be getting bigger, the, theoretically, the bigger number right here should go on top. Um, so mechanical efficiency, we will have output work divided by input work, okay? Usually, that number is then multiplied by 100 because the output work will be smaller than the input work. Remember, they can never be equal and output work will never be greater than input work. So, this will be a smaller number than this. So, let's say 9 out of 10. So, 0.9 times 100, it'll be 90% efficient, right? So this one 
tells us, and this is the important part, it tells us how much work is lost to friction. So this example with a drill, what we're talking about here is, you know, for instance, when you're using a drill, it gets really hot. It could spark. It makes noise. There might be like a grinding feeling. All of those are examples of friction. And that friction is waste. That's wasted work. That is work, that's energy, that's force, that's going into purely overcoming friction for the sake of friction, and it's not actually accomplishing anything in terms of the job that you want to do. If with the drill you're trying to drill a hole or you're trying to screw in a nail or something, or screw in a nail, screw in a screw, um, and your drill is heating up or sparking or making noise or having some grinding feeling, what that is showing you is that a little bit of the work that, that, that you and the drill are doing is being spent on friction. So that's a waste. So now let's see how this kind of plays out in practice here. Um, we remember that mechanical advantage is basically how much easier or how much the force is multiplied. And mechanical efficiency is how much we lose to friction. So this is an example we've seen before. You're going to close, you know, you're going to grab it down here. You're going to close the handles. Let's work in inches because we all understand inches. Four inches. And up here is your lobster claw. And this piece where you put the actual lobster claw is going to close one inch. Right? We have been calculating mechanical advantage by looking at distance, right? And the reason for that, the reason that we've been looking at distance is because for us, in our practices, looking at these pictures especially, but even if we're in the lab, it's a lot easier, easier, excuse me, to measure distance than it is to measure force. Because if I'm trying to measure exactly how much force I'm putting on these two handles and exactly how much force this area right here is putting on the lobster claw, I need a force meter, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. But I can easily take out a ruler and measure that this is 4 inches and this is 1 inch, and therefore it should be a 4 to 1 ratio. Right? So <clears throat> that's why we're doing it this way, but it, if we had force meters, it should work exactly the same way. So theoretically, let's say that we're going to have input here, and we're going to have output down here. Okay, so let's say that this job, the work, is 8 joules of work, right? I input 8 joules of work. If we're going to have um, the input down here is, so the force, we're solving for the force, that number of newtons, times the distance, 4 inches. Now remember joules and newtons we should technically be in the metric system and we should be in meters um, for the distance. We're going to overlook that just for simplicity's sake right now. Okay, So 8 joules divided by 4 will give us a remainder of 2 newtons to make that equation work. Right Now the output, let's for a second pretend that the output could also be 8 joules of work. It won't be, but for the time being, let's pretend this is an ideal machine. Perfectly frictionless, right? Impossible. So 8 joules of work, we're still going to be solving for force. The distance now is going to be 1 inch. So we need to solve for this. 8 divided by 1 will be 8 newtons. So we see that because right here we've got the distance changing by a factor of 4, it changes by 4 times, the force here also changes by a factor of four times, right? We go from two newtons of input force to eight newtons of output force, four inches of input distance, one inch of output distance. So again, this is with an ideal machine. And here, if we were going to calculate the mechanical advantage, we would take eight newtons of output force divided by two newtons of input force, and we would find, because that cancels out, we would find that it multiplies it by four times, right? Four x, four times. All right, now that's theoretical. If in reality, we've got in this mechanism right here, right, right in here, it's rusty, it's old, it's not well oiled. 
let's say that there's actually a Newton of friction to overcome. Okay, so that's actually going to change this. If it theoretically should be, if we're multiplying it by 4, 2 times 4 should be 8. But there's a Newton of friction. 1 minus 1 Newton due to friction. That's going to leave us with 7 Newtons times that 1 inch. That's going to only equal 7 joules of force. This is the reality situation. Right? Now we're left with a new amount of force. So it's still, if we're comparing our work output to the work, or sorry, the force output to the force input, therefore the mechanical advantage, we'd say 7 newtons divided by 2 newtons, and you know that's 3.5. So our mechanical advantage is still pretty good. This lobster cracker here makes the job three and a half times easier, much more easy. However, the work, however, we see if the input is eight joules and the reality of the situation here, when we're not talking about an ideal situation like we were up here, the reality of it is that we only get seven joules out. If we're gonna calculate our mechanical efficiency, which would be seven joules, divided by 8 joules, it's 7 eighths efficient. Um, so, you know, if we, if we divide that out, 7 divided by 8, we're left with 0.875. Multiply that by 100, and we're left with a machine that's 87.5% efficient. So where did that 12.5% go? That 12.5% of that work went to overcoming that Newton of friction. Now a Newton of friction would be a lot. That would be a very rusty, um, old lobster cracker. But we're starting to get the idea here. If our input, we've got 8 joules of work being done, 2 Newtons of force across 4 inches, right? Really it should be 4 meters, but that wouldn't make sense for the lobster cracker. Theoretically, if we're changing it to one inch down here, this should change, multiply it by four, that'd be eight newtons, and that would keep it at eight joules of work. But this would be in an ideal situation, which will never happen. It will not be frictionless. So let's say that there's a newton of friction, subtract that out, we've now got seven newtons times that one inch, we're left with seven joules remaining meaning that we still have a great mechanical advantage of 3.5 and our efficiency is decent. About 12% is lost to friction. So we're going to scoot down here and take a look at this picture. You've seen this before, same idea. We're going to move this paint, paint can lid up one inch. Right. We're going to move this handle from here. Our starting position was here. Let's say it's six inches. So our input we're going to set this up again. Output, we're going to say ideal, and we're going to say output real. Okay? So, our input, if let's say that this takes 12 joules of work. Okay? So 12 joules is going to equal some amount of newtons, some amount of force, times your input is you moving this six inches. So that's going to 12 divided by six is going to leave us with two newtons of force. So theoretically in your ideal world you'd have 12 joules of work on the output equals blank number of newtons and now the output only moves one inch. So 12 divided by one would be 12 newtons. Once again we know that the ideal is impossible. So let's say there's again Let's say 2 newtons of friction this time. That would be a lot of friction. Minus 2 newtons of friction is going to leave us with 10 newtons down here. That's the actual times the 1 inch. It's going to leave us with 10 joules. So now you are left with calculating the mechanical advantage and the mechanical efficiency. Remember, mechanical uh, advantage is output force, the real output force divided by the input force, hint, hint, and mechanical efficiency would be taking this divided by that, 
and multiplying by 100.